All right, all right, all right. You gonna learn today. Hey y'all, what's up? So look, we got a beer with it. I didn't bring my, the angle today. I didn't bring my um, tripod thing or whatever. But I am super excited for today's teaching. Um, my heart is really open with this teaching because it's just something that's very near and dear to the heart of God. So it's very near and dear to the heart of me. Um, and so I pray that as you listen to this teaching, that you have an open heart to hear what God has to say through this teaching, but that also you truly take the time to go into God's presence and you ask God to reveal this teaching to you and how it shall manifest in your life and if there are any hindrances keeping you from getting to that prepared space to receive this incoming prodigal okay and i won't say prodigal as in single but the incoming prodigals okay the lost people the people in our families that are in the world the people in um, our communities that are lost the people that we walk by daily that are lost you know this teaching is really near and dear to the heart of God because he wants his church to be ready to receive those who have straight away um, and that's what the teaching is going to be about today okay so it's titled a father's love God's love is all-encompassing. And when I say all-encompassing, his love care covers everything. Nature, the food you eat, the clothes you wear, <laughs> the depths of your heart, you know, the heavens, the, the pits of the pits of everything. Like, his love covers everything. And um, It's so authentic. God's love is so authentic. It can't be duplicated. And I think it's so beautiful how in my own journey, I always say this in a prayer. I say, God, you loved me before I even loved myself. And that's a love that I'm still grasping to understand. You know, that I could willingly turn my back against someone that I was once committed to and do all the things that I knew would not make this person happy. But yet this person still received me with open arms. Yet this person still saw that I, I needed love that I needed compassion, even in the midst of all my mess ups. And I know a lot of you guys can relate to that as well. That's how many of us have encountered God. Romans two and four says that the kindness of God is what leads people to repentance. God's kindness, his grace, his mercy, his love for me is what brought me back to him. Is what put me in alignment with him is what made me seek him out so let's get into the teaching so first i want to go to luke um 15 and 20 i tried to put my markers because i didn't want to be running all around the bible but um this is the parable of the lost son you guys know about the prodigal so it says and he arose and came to his father. So that he is referencing is the son that had went away from home and wasted all of his possessions, right? But when he was still a great way off, when he was still far away, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And how many of you guys know that even when you were far away, because of the father's love, the father's love for you, he had compassion for you, even that far away. To the extent where he was like, no, I gotta go get her. I gotta go talk to her. I gotta go pull her back in. That's my daughter, I love her, or my son, right? 
and this is God's heart. And I'm gonna continue to teach it because I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm trying to jump ahead of myself. So in this hour specifically, because God started talking to me about it last week, and I received confirmation this weekend um, at a, a prophetic conference I was at, and it was just where God was just. We can't truly be a servant to God if we don't know how to serve each other. I've been guilty of not knowing how to serve appropriately, okay? And I am not afraid to admit it. Thank you, God, for your grace. Oh, and it's like, in this hour, God is so focused on us developing a heart like his. And obviously, we won't be just like God, right? But a heart like God for his people, like, For example, let's say somebody get on your nerves all the time. I don't know what it is. Let's say they just do something all the time. And I experience this in my own life. And I would have to, God would have to say to me, like, is this how I would show love in this situation? And I'm like, God, I don't care about love. <laughs> but it's like this flesh that I'm in. I love people. Don't get me wrong. But at the end of the day, sometimes this flesh that I'm in, it takes over. If I'm not being aware of my emotions if i'm not being aware of my actions but i'm so grateful for the holy spirit who's our corrector who's our teacher the perfect teacher because he'll put me in check and say is this how i would love this person in this situation and i have fallen short of this lesson so many times so many times you know and every time i'm just repenting and pleading to god to forgive me and of course he forgives but he wants us right now in this hour more than ever to develop a heart, a servant's heart, a heart that literally is reflective of God and how he uh, and how he feels towards his people. We always speak about, God, I want to know what my purpose is. I want to know what my gifts are. I want to know how to operate in my gifts. But do you know if you don't have a basis of God's love? Everything that you're doing is it is it's not um I think it's a scripture that says it's like loud symbols or something. If you're like clashing symbols and stuff, like if you aren't prophesying with love, if you aren't using any of your gifts with love. And so there's this favorite scripture that I was meditating on a few weeks ago. It's a recent scripture that's my favorite scripture. And I'm actually going to go to it. It's Proverbs 16 and 24. God, I thank you. God, I thank you, Lord. Proverbs 16 and 24. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. Okay, I see it's trying to rhyme there. You know what I'm saying? But pleasant words are like a honey home. Honey is so sweet. It's so sweet to the soul and health to the bones. The kind words that we say to each other can really uplift and encourage someone. The other day I was looking in Ephesians 4 and 5. And in Ephesians 4, 29, I'm going to it, y'all. Hold on. Ephesians 4 and 29, it says. Sorry, y'all. One more page. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. So not only when we speak kind words, we're, we're sharing love with someone and we're bringing help to their bones, but we're expressing the same grace that God shows us to them. And so in this hour, this is what God's focused on. Remember the prophetic release for the year 5783 was focused on the year of the return. Remember, I said people will be returning to you. So it's not just about recompense. It's not just about judgment. It's not just about retribution, all of these things. But it's also about the return. God called it the year of the return for a reason. God's lost children are returning home to him. And we are representative of God here on this earth. 
So we have to be receptive of them, okay? Um, we talk about evangelism. We talk about prophesying. We talk about all of these different things. But are we truly ready to receive the harvest that God has set of souls for us to teach, for us to love on, for us to guide closer to him? Are we literally prepared? And that's why I say, like, today I'm not my normal silly and everything self because this 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 teaching is is close to the heart of God and it's really close to the heart of me. That's not to say the other teaching's not. But it's just so, I don't know, pressing. It's a burden. I have to release it, okay? Um, so... We see this return. The other day when I was in prayer, God said Philemon, okay? Philemon, and we know about Onesimus, right? Where Paul um, wrote a letter to Philemon, which was Onesimus's, uh, I don't know, slave owner. And I'm gonna read two scriptures to you, or three scriptures. I'm gonna read uh, Philemon, 1 10 through 12 it says i appeal to you for my son onesimus whom i have begotten while in my chains who once was unprofitable to you but now is profitable to you and to me i am sending him back you therefore receive him that is my own heart so the the major emphasis of this is 12 right where god is saying like and this hit me when i heard Oh, this hit me when I heard it because it was like, like when God brought me to it, because I was just like, God, wow. He says, I'm sending you my own heart. This is someone that is now useful. How many of you know that when we defile ourselves and when we separate from God, we're no longer useful to the kingdom. We're no longer useful to God. But when we come back and we repent and surrender as the prodigal did in Luke 15, what ends up happening is, is that God, like you said, his compassion sees you from far off. He welcomes you. He throws this huge celebration for you because he loves you and because his heart is with you. And God wants us to have like the same appeal that Paul is making to Philemon is the same. Um, is the same that God is appeal that God is having me make to you guys, to the people that are coming back. And. This goes along with the prophetic word God had me release about Joseph, it's time to heal. That's on the podcast if you guys are wondering. So you guys can go listen to that. But what God was saying there is that Joseph never reflected on the weight of all of what he been, what he had went through and all the people that had hurt him. Because the thing is, is you can forgive people, but that doesn't change that out of sight, out of mind. So once you run back into these people, once these people come back, yeah, you forgave them for what they did, but did you really review the weight of what you had to go through? Because that there in itself can harden your heart from receiving these people back. And God doesn't want us to be that way. So Joseph, it's time to heal. So if that sounds like a word for you, definitely go check out that podcast episode. But God wants us to have a father's heart have his heart and so many of us right now what God is saying is we will respond like the prodigal's brother so he said but he was angry and would not go in this is Luke 15 28 therefore his father came out and pleaded with him so this is God's plea remember this is God's plea to us he's like I want you guys to receive me I want you guys to uh, receive me because what was the thing it says if you receive the son then you receive the father right so it's kind of the same thing it's if, if Paul is seeing his heart is with Onesimus and he wants Philemon to receive him then God is saying my heart is with these people if you receive them you receive me so I need you to receive them so he answered and said to his father lo these many years I have been serving you I never transgressed your commandment at any time, and yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. 
And he said to him, son, you are always with me and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad for your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. God is saying that it does not matter about our works and how long we've been in Christ and how long we've served him. And if next week our cousin comes and all and comes and confesses Christ and all of a sudden they receive everything that they've ever wanted as like a celebration from God. The thing is, is that this person was once dead and now they're alive again. We have someone added to our body, someone that can go out there and evangelize, someone that can go out there and reach others. So it's a beautiful thing. And God wants us to be prepared to receive this beauty. But a lot of us will be angry. Well, God, I've been in the church for 20 years and da 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 da, da. You know, we have to have God's heart get outside of our flesh. And this message hits me because I can just see a, a, a B-roll, if you want to say that. And for those that don't know what B-roll is, it's like, a, it's like the little clips you take of different places when you like making a reel or something or a YouTube video. But it just makes me think of all the moments that I'm like, God, thank you for your grace because I didn't handle, I didn't handle your love correctly. I didn't handle your love correctly. I didn't treat them, I didn't treat that person exactly with your love. You know, and it hurts because I can feel God's grief in that moment where he sends us to certain people. And instead we allow our flesh to get in the way. But God's grace, okay? Like I said, this is a message that's dear to God's heart, so it's really dear to me. So. Y'all know that I'm not going to leave y'all hanging. I'm going to give you guys a little start to developing a heart like God. The first thing is you, when you first wake up in the morning, you know, we talk about putting on the full armor of God. But I think anything that's more important than all of that is putting on your cloak of humility putting on the heart of God every morning. So along with all of your armor, God, give me your heart today. Let me see that it's not about me. Let me be a vessel that you can purely use throughout this day. God, let this be a day where people will rejoice in your goodness because they see that you're with me. God, let this be a day that my flesh falls into surrender of things of the spirit. God, let this be a day where I can share your love so passionately, where I can just walk into a room and just smile. And all of a sudden people are asking, girl, why are you so happy? And I can share the goodness of you with them. And I can evangelize in a way that is wholesome, that is loving, that is kind, that is supportive, that's not judgmental, that's not full of condemnation. Instead, that's just full of your love, God. Let me be a vessel of your love. Let me be your heart, God. Let me be your heart. Let me be your heart today. If you notice that God has said certain people are coming back in your heart, I mean, not in your heart, but being back in your life, and your heart is kind of hearted to them. Ezekiel 36, 26, begin to declare that over your life daily, that God is going to give you a new heart, a heart of flesh and not of stone. Because when we have a stony heart, not only does it impair our ability to hear from God concerning ourselves, but whatever area in our heart is hard, that impairs our ability to be able to hear from God concerning that particular area. So if you are completely shut down to your family, if you are completely shut down to this, you won't even be able to hear the word, what thus says the Lord and receive or and obey, because Shema in Hebrew means to hear and to obey what thus says the Lord concerning that family, concerning that family member, concerning that situation. We're all guilty of it. I ain't pointing fingers at all. If anything, I'm going to point all these fingers to me. And another thing that I wanted to say is, this was one of my favorite scriptures uh, earlier in my journey, and it still is, is uh, Psalms 139, 23 through 24. Um, this is where David asks God to search his heart, all of his, know all of his thoughts and test him and to um, 
pretty much purify him, cleanse his heart. And another thing is, is that, you know, you want to ask God to reveal your heart to you. God, what, what are the hard spaces in my heart? What are the stony places? What are the, the areas that I don't want anyone to come into? What, where, where am I inhibiting your love from encompassing me fully? We want to be full of God's love. We want to be full. And like I said, I can admit I have not always done right by this at all. But I, anytime I've slipped up, I go, I go into prayer, but I also take that lesson to my next. I'm like, okay, God, I'm going to be better in this area. Don't beat yourself up for what you did in the past. Just try and make sure that you behave. Um, I won't even say behave, but that you are better in your future, in your future relationships, in your future friendships. Everything is a learning lesson in this life. And no matter what you've done, no matter who you've hurt, no matter who's hurt you, God is able to go exceedingly above all you could ever think or ask. So what God is able to do is, is he's able to work all those good and bad things together for your good. So um, I'm going to just say a quick prayer and then that will end our teaching for today. Okay. Dear Lord, my Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you so much for your love. I thank you for your heart. I thank you for revealing your heart and your will to your servants, God. And I pray that every morning when we wake up, when we arise, that we have a fresh reminder from you to walk in humility, to be clothed in grace, to be showered and full of your love. And to allow your light not to only be a lamp to our feet, but a light to our path. And a light that uh, shines so bright out of us as a beacon that draws in those that are so far off in the darkness seeking you. God, may we die to our flesh daily. And Father, we ask for your forgiveness for any moments in which we have not represented your love well. God, we ask that you remove any offenses made against us or that we have in our hearts against others because of the lack of love and grace we fail to show each other. God, may your love be forever abounding in our lives. May, may the first thing we think of every single day, Father, is your love. And may we exercise that love to others around us. Because, God, that is your heart. And we are here to serve you. We have offered ourselves as a holy and living and acceptable sacrifice so that we can be used by you. We have been set apart, Lord God, so we can be used for every good work. So right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I declare, God, that you are performing heart surgery on each of us, that you are revealing the spaces that needs to be worked on, that needs to be surrendered to you. And that in this process, that we will be your hearts, that we will walk around not just as your servants, but we will walk around as your hearts, God, in all areas and situations of our life, all circumstances, God. Let your light shine through our heart. Let your revelation shine. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you so much, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We praise you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray this prayer and I seal this prayer with the blood of Jesus. Amen and amen. Whew. Wow. Somebody get themselves a hug. <sighs> Y'all, I am in public. People walking by just looking at me. I... Sometimes you just need to be Wrap me up, wrap me up, wrap me all up in your love. All that I want. Fill me up, fill me up all with your love. Oh, God, I just thank you for your love. Wow. Thank you, Lord. He is such a great comforter. I'm the double God I can see. Oh, you're not shambi de 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 de
Somebody needs this. Somebody is going to get to this part of the video and you need this. Take it. I feel it. God, his glory. Forgive us, Father, for the many times we've operated outside of your love. God. Whew. Let's just hug ourselves for a minute. I'm looking at the timer, so when it hits 2613, just hug yourself for a minute. You're cloaked in his love. Lord, we love you. We release the orphan spirit, God. We do not have the spirit of fear. We have the spirit of adoption. We are your sons and daughters. <laughs> By our faith in Christ Jesus, we can come home humbly, humbly unto you, God. Thank you. Ah, ten more seconds. Just keep hugging yourself. We're almost done. I don't care where you at. Unless you're behind the wheel. Please don't be hugging yourself behind the wheel. <laughs> All right. I love you guys so much. Until next week. Same place, same time. May God bless you. And wake up every day. And put on God's heart. Take off your heart and put on God's. All right. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. You're going to learn today.